So we've got a little bit of a tradition here around the holidays on the Nerd Crave channel where we, we take a look at the GameStop Holiday Gift Guide every year around this time, and this year is no exception. I've just got my hands on the 2023 Holiday Gift Guide from GameStop. Of course, this is probably... Uh, this is the Canadian version because, uh, you know, the air is better up here. But, uh, you know, for you down in the States, I imagine they'll have the same selection of stuff. Maybe the prices will be in your own uh, currency. But uh, let's let's just, you know, kick off the holidays in Nerd Craze style. So, front cover here, they've got this, uh, they've got this Yeti now that's some kind of a holiday mascot for... Uh, for GameStop, and it says get Yeti for the holidays. Uh, you'll see this appear here and there throughout the book, but uh, let's just get right into this. So the reason why I get excited about this is because, you know, this brings me back to the days of, you know, the old Sears catalogs, and up here in Canada we had Eaton's, which was, you know, pretty much the same as Sears, like a big department store that gave out catalogs and stuff every year. Uh, and you'd get those wish books or whatever around this time of year that would have all kinds of things, you know, for kids that you could you could look through and look at the toys and the video games and, you know, all kinds of really cool stuff as a kid. And it was just so much fun to, to sit on your grandma's living room floor and flip through that book and circle stuff that you wanted. And, you know, you basically might only get one or two items out of that book if your parents even thought to look at what you had circled. But it was still just so much fun to just wish and wonder what you were going to get for Christmas. And, you know, this... This small little gift guide here really kind of replicates that feeling to, to somewhat. It's the closest thing we can get in 2023. So interesting, they start out um, the very first page here with Pokemon and GameStop has been going this way for a while where really upwards of 50% of the store now is the tchotchkes and the collectibles and the trading cards and things like that. And it makes sense because physical games unfortunately are going the way of the dodo you know that and i know that uh nintendo's still holding pretty good at like maybe 60 40 digital 40 percent physical uh but a lot of the other companies like playstation i think now is like 80 percent digital and xbox you don't even want to think about xbox with game pass uh like 90 percent of xbox owners have game pass and they don't buy digital or physical they just basically rent games through game pass and uh, so you know gamestop is really struggling to maintain relevancy in 2023 and beyond as physical games just more and more disappear uh it would be good if they would create partnerships, maybe get into the publishing business with some of these small companies like Limited Run Games and things like that that do cater to physical media. But so far, um, the bright idea hasn't struck them. We saw Limited Run uh, have a deal with Best Buy for a couple of years there to release some of their wider release games. But uh, I think they're currently shopping for a distributor. So I don't know. We'll see what happens with the future of physical games at GameStop, but this might be one of the last years that we see a lot of physical games. We're certainly coming towards the end of that period. Uh, PlayStation's just now the brand new PlayStation Slim uh, by default does not come with a disk drive. You can get a disk drive version or a non-disk drive version, but the disk drive is like removable, so it's like it's an afterthought to Sony at this point. Um, you know, obviously we know the Series S doesn't have a disk drive for Xbox and, uh, you know, leaked documents show that the next Xbox Series X is going to be completely diskless. So, you know, this may be one of the last couple of years that we can actually sit down and look at gifts that we can give to people in the video game world. So... Yeah, we got some Pokemon stuff here for sure, some Yu-Gi-Oh stuff, uh, some Doctor Who magic cards, that's interesting. Uh, the crossovers, we've got, of course, some some pop figures. Uh, this is a Guy Lafleur Funko Pop here. Uh, Guy Lafleur's a famous hockey player, or was in Canada. 
Uh, let me see, what else have we got? All right, so getting to the second page here, we are focused on Nintendo, and it makes sense that Nintendo would be at the front of the book because guaranteed Nintendo is, uh, not only do they sell a lot of software, but they sell a lot more physical software than anybody else. So having Nintendo front and center here, we've got the Mario, K Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Bundle, um, which is advertised here. Uh, I don't know if this is the OLED version. It doesn't say OLED on it anywhere, so maybe this is just the red box. I guess this is just the red box switch, which is the non-OLED switch uh, with Mario Kart 8 included for free. Plus, it looks like three months of Nintendo Switch online. Uh, they're saying $89 bonus value. Ooh! Uh, Nintendo Switch OLED model at $449. That's Canadian price. I think it's $349. Uh, or $3.99 in the US, I'm not sure. Uh, you can see still, after all this time, Joy-Cons are ridiculously expensive. Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons, $99.99, uh, it says each, but they mean per pair. So, 100 bucks, I mean, there is an awful lot of technology packed into these little Joy-Cons, but come on, we're like seven years into the life cycle. Um, you would think these things would start coming down a little bit in price, considering they're literally $20 more expensive than PS5 or Xbox Series controllers that come in at like $79 and often go on sale for $59, like quite routinely. So definitely like to see some kind of a price drop on Joy-Cons. Personally, I would like to get another pair of Joy-Cons because I have the Zelda OLED Edition Switch and I you know, I don't really want to gum up uh, the special edition controllers, but I don't have another pair right now. So, um, you know, I would like to get a spare pair just so I could put those Zelda ones away and keep them clean. Uh, here we've got uh, the Biogenic Players Pack. Uh, this is, you know, stupid accessories that, that they always push around the holidays. You've got like thumb grips and a storage case for games. You've got some really crappy headphones, I'm sure, and like a dock or something. Um, don't really recommend these. Like if you're looking for something to buy a relative for Christmas or something, you know they have a Switch, buy them a Nintendo uh, online membership gift card for about the same price here. This is 60 bucks. Buy them one of those online membership gift cards because not only does it get them online play for the year and cloud saves, but it also gives them access to a whole bunch of Nintendo's retro catalog of games for free for that entire year. You get Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and Sega Genesis. So quite a robust library of games that you can play at your leisure for that entire year included in that price of about 60 bucks a year, 70 bucks a year, something like that here in Canada. Um, so moving on to page two, let's take a look at some of the games that they're highlighting for this Christmas season. So we've got Detective Pikachu Returns, that came out pretty recently, that's $64.99. Uh, full price game here in Canada is... Uh, $79.99, so that's not a full price game. Um, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom was actually Nintendo's first foray into $70 games in US at $70. $70 here uh, actually is $89.99, 90 bucks. So uh, they're definitely going to be trying to push Tears of the Kingdom as much as possible this year. The jury's out on whether it's going to sell as well as Breath of the Wild, but uh, Let's see what else have we got here. Pikmin 4. I've heard really good things about Pikmin 4. I've never been a big Pikmin fan, but people are saying, fans of the series are saying it's a really good entry and a good place to start if you're looking to get into the Pikmin series. Um, you know, lots of great features to explore and really, um, as I say, I'm not really a fan of Pikmin. I... I don't know, I played a little bit of Pikmin 3 on the Wii U, but it uh, it wasn't really my thing. Um, great, I think, for younger gamers, though. Um, and then WarioWare Move It. This is a lower price, $64.99, lower price game as well. Uh, this is a collection of mini, mini games. If you've never played a WarioWare game, uh, it's a collection of mini games with kind of a 
you know, a different spin for each game. This one is called Move It because it relies heavily on getting up and moving, obviously, with the motion controllers on the Joy-Cons and that sort of thing. Super Mario RPG just came out last week. Uh, I've had a chance to play a little bit of this game, and uh, if you're nostalgic for the Super Nintendo era, this is a beautiful remake of a classic Super Nintendo game. Uh, if you're, you know, maybe you have young kids in, in the house uh, that have never really played a role-playing game, this is a great place to start. It's a great, you know, baby's first RPG, if you will. Uh, but it has enough depth to keep, you know, older and more experienced players interested as well. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, this needs a price drop at $65. That should be about $40, I think. Um, I do have this game. I have played it. The game looks surprisingly decent as far as graphics go on the Nintendo Switch, you know, compared to other versions of the game that I've played. But unfortunately, this game really hasn't aged all that well. Uh, like, as good as it looks, it still looks like a like a rough PS3 game. Um, and the controls are a little bit kind of janky and stuff like that now. Uh, you know, this was a really, really top-notch game 10, 12 years ago, but uh, it just hasn't aged as well as some other games from that generation. It's still a fantastic game though, but I wouldn't personally pay $65 for it. Uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, this game's been around forever, all the, you know, DLC and stuff is available for it. Uh, I will say, if, uh, if you're planning on buying Smash Bros. Ultimate, um, and you want the full experience with all the characters, be prepared to pay quite a bit more for all the, you know, fighter packs and things like that. Uh, this is a full price game and it's gonna co cost you, like, double that to actually get the complete experience, so keep that in mind. Uh, Mario Party Superstars, Super Mario 3D World with Bowser's Fury. These are older games from a year or two ago that are that are staples. These are just evergreen games, right? Um, you know, if you're getting a Switch for the first time, uh, which would be surprising in 2023, but if, uh, you know, if you're getting somebody a Switch for the first time, maybe you have young kids or something that are just coming to the age, Mario Party and Mario 3D World are fantastic beginner, like, you know, great things for kids, great things for families. There's multiplayer in both these games with Mario Party. As long as you have, you know, an extra set of Joy-Cons or something, uh, you can play with up to four players. Uh, same with Super Mario 3D World, you can play with up to four players, so it's great for families. Highly recommend both of these games, even though they are full price games even this many years down the line let's see what we still got we've got another uh two pages of nintendo to go through so we'll kind of just speed it up here a little bit uh, nba 2k 2k i would not recommend these games on the switch unless it's the only console you have and you absolutely have to play a basketball game i guess go ahead Hogwarts Legacy would not recommend this version again unless the Switch is your only console. It is a serviceable version of the game. It plays fine, but this is the worst looking version of the game that you can possibly get. Uh, even if you have a last gen console like a PS4 or an Xbox One, it's going to look and play better on those consoles than it will on the Switch. But if you absolutely want this game in portable and you don't have something like a Steam Deck, go ahead and get it. It will play fine, just don't expect miracles from the graphics. Uh, Mortal Kombat 1, uh, kind of the same story. This is more than full price. This is $89.99, which is the $70 game in the States. Um, I would never pay that much money for any Mortal Kombat game because these games uh, get so cheap a couple of years down the road. Like uh, the last game, Mortal Kombat 11, um, once all the DLC came out for, for it, you got Mortal Kombat 11 Ultimate Edition or whatever. Uh, and you can buy that game now a couple of years down the road for like 10 to $20. Um, so I would definitely hold off on Mortal Kombat, especially because, again, like Hogwarts Legacy, this is the worst version of the game that you can buy. And it's actually pretty bad. I mean, it's playable if you have no other option and you absolutely have to play Mortal Kombat, 
but I would recommend buying Mortal Kombat 11 instead of Mortal Kombat 1 because it uh, runs much better, looks much better on the Switch. Uh, Batman Arkham Trilogy. I was really excited when this was announced in the summer. Um, you know, the ability to play these games on the go, again, like Red Dead Redemption, these are PS3 games. You've got Arkham uh, Asylum, Arkham City, and Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight was a PS4 game, so it's kind of impressive that they've got Arkham Knight running on the Switch, and apparently it looks pretty decent. Uh, I have not bought this, and I don't really intend to, because um, only one game, only the first game of the trilogy is actually on the cartridge, uh, which means you're going to have to download uh, the other two games, which are fairly large games, and they're going to take up space on your storage, which means they would not fit likely on your base Switch. You would have to buy an SD card, which I would recommend doing anyway, but you will have to buy an SD card to fit these on it. <coughs> Excuse me. There are better ways to play this trilogy. Uh, if you have any other consoles, uh, I would recommend getting it there, PS5, whatever. Um, you know, if you have a PC, get it on PC, get it on the Steam Deck. Um, the games look and play fine on the Switch, but uh, just not having them on the cartridge is a real bummer uh, for physical preservation and just for, you know, the convenience of, of being able to play it and delete it and always have it there. Um, Omori, a uh, friend of the channel Fem Trooper, talks, speaks really highly of this game. I haven't uh, I haven't played it myself, but at $45 Canadian, that's probably about 30-ish US, um, it's probably worth dipping my toes into this. It's something I'm interested in checking out. Uh, Tunic. Tunic is kind of a uh, Zelda-inspired game that has a bit of a higher difficulty threshold. Apparently, I haven't played it yet. The graphics are gorgeous. It looks and plays wonderfully on the Switch, so I would recommend this. Uh, it's coming in at $60, and uh, I've seen it on sale for like $40. I'd probably jump in at $40. Uh, Nintendo Switch Sports. Um, if you're looking to recreate that Wii Sports from 10 years ago that you had, you know, the, the family bowling and that sort of thing uh, with the Wii remotes. Um, this is a this is an acceptable replacement for that on the Nintendo Switch. There is nothing really outstanding about this game. There's nothing that really makes it better than the old uh, Nintendo, you know, Wii Sports other than HD graphics, I guess. Uh, there is some online play as well, which is kind of nice, I guess, but... Uh, yeah, if you're looking for that Wii Sports experience, again, on a newer console, for sure, pick this up at $64.99. Um, but other than that, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it as being a must-play. Uh, Borderlands 3 Ultimate Edition, this just came out. This is another Beyond Full Price game. This is... Uh, or no, sorry, this is another regular full price game, 80 bucks here in Canada, so 60 bucks in the States. I hear this runs really well. We've previously had the Borderlands Handsome Collection, uh, very cheap on the Switch, uh, something you can pick up for, you know, 10 to $20 pretty regularly, which includes uh, Borderlands 1, 2, and the pre-sequel. Again, like what I said with the Batman trilogy, though, only one game is on the cartridge, so you might want to just pick those up digitally on a sale on the eShop or something. Um, Borderlands 3, I don't know the status of whether the whole game is on a cartridge or not, but uh, apparently it plays pretty well. Uh, we've got, of course, the obligatory LEGO games. There's a whole row and a half of them here. Uh, we won't get into them too, too much, except to say um, Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga here is kind of the most recent Lego Star Wars game, and it assembles all nine of the movies and basically replays the story of all nine of the movies in the Lego game formula. Uh, this game was really well received, pretty high quality. It plays pretty good on the Switch, as you would probably expect, so... At $29.99 Canadian, that's like $20 US, I would highly recommend that. 
Uh, the rest of them, you know, kind of pick your poison. Do you like Jurassic Park? Do you like Marvel characters? Like, uh, you know, whatever your kid's gonna want this holiday, that's fine. And then over on this page here, there's a bit of an ad for the Switch Online, an expansion pack. We talked about that before where I said, you know, if you get them a gift card for the online membership, that gets them access to games and stuff like that. Um, that's definitely a great stocking stuffer. Uh, eShop cards are great stocking stuffers too because there tends to be a lot of sales on the Nintendo eShop, that's the online storefront on the Switch, and there tends to be a lot of sales around the holidays so your kids can actually get really good value for their money out of an eShop card on Christmas Day, on Boxing Day when they're actually spending the points or the money there because they will find hundreds of games that are five dollars ten dollars two dollars like you know so they can really bulk up a bit of a collection of stuff to play over the winter with a twenty dollar card or a fifty dollar card depending on how they choose to spend the money um then you've got some accessories here of course the obligatory you know we wish we we still had the wii accessories with the golf clubs and all that kind of stuff uh, don't get sucked into buying this for your grandkids. They'll never use it. It's useless junk plastic that will never get used. Um, it doesn't really have many applications. Like even in Switch Sports, it's just not necessary. It's just a gimmicky piece of plastic. Would not recommend this unless you have maybe really young kids that... Even then, I don't know. It's just plastic that's going to end up under the couch. Um, let's see what we got on the next page here. All right, let's move into the PlayStation section. So, of course, we're talking about PlayStation 5. We're three years into the PlayStation 5 life cycle, and we also have an ad for PlayStation VR 2, and it feels like Sony sort of made the VR 2 and threw it out to die. We really haven't heard anything about it. We got one major sort of AAA experience with Horizon Call of the Mountain, uh, which is like a spin-off of their big Horizon series, Horizon Zero Dawn and that sort of thing, um, which is apparently a pretty darn good experience in VR 2. And then there's support for VR in Gran Turismo 7, which is their, uh, you know, latest premier racing game. And apparently that is kind of a, you know, aha moment, if you will, for the next generation of VR, but there's just not enough software out there to really justify the purchase at this. Look at the price here, Canadian. It's $750 for the VR set. Uh, the PS5 itself is only $650. So, you know, this accessory for the PS5 that barely has any software worth playing is $100 more than the PS5 itself. So, unfortunately, I cannot recommend PSVR 2 at this point. Uh, there are other VR devices on the market that are cheaper and more useful and better supported with software, including um, Meta, Facebook's uh, uh, Oculus, uh, their Oculus Quest line. They have the Quest 2, which is about three years old, and they're on sale and clearance right now for $350 to $450, and that's a good choice if you're just getting into VR, or if you want the latest, they've come out with the Quest 3 now, which I think is a similar price point to the PlayStation VR 2, but there's a lot more software um, support available for that, just because there's a lot more units of it out there. Um, you know, Oculus is a really long-standing brand uh, with a lot of PC support and that sort of thing, so I'd probably recommend going in that direction. Uh, you can never go wrong with an extra controller if you have a PS5 al already. Uh, an extra DualSense Edge controller uh, could be a... This is their kind of premium controller. So, you know, if hubby or boyfriend is a, you know, a real hardcore Call of Duty player or something like that, having the best of the best controller with all the programmable buttons and all that kind of stuff... Uh, the DualSense Edge at $269 Canadian is quite the investment, uh, but it is a pretty darn good controller. And then the Pulse 3D wireless headset. I would highly recommend uh, this headset uh, both for the PS5. If you're looking for a, for a headset for the PS5, don't bother with a Turtle Beach or something. Just get the actual Sony headset. The sound is incredible. 
Uh, the only caveat to these is the range is not great. Uh, it seems like you can only get about 15 or 20 feet away from the PlayStation before it starts to cut out. Um, so if you're using these on PC to listen to music or something like that, like you can't really walk around the house listening to music because it, you can only go one room away before it starts cutting out. Uh, but the sound quality is good if you're sitting right in front of the TV gaming. Uh, some major uh, Sony titles here to look at. Gran Turismo 7, of course, is from like a year and a bit ago. Uh, still a great game despite the controversy around a lot of the online microtransactions and things like that. Uh, you know, there is a decent base game here. Uh, but there are a lot of sort of pay-to-win mechanics built into this game uh, that try to suck you into buying the best cars and that sort of thing with real money. So, you know, it's up to you whether you want to get into that or not. There are other racing games that you can play, but Gran Turismo is kind of the premier track simulator. Uh, last of Us Part 1, uh, these games have been regurgitated ad nauseum for the last 10 years, but if you haven't played it, uh, it is one of the best Sony franchises and a good place to start. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V just never stops selling. It's sold like, what, 155 million copies or something at this point. Uh, God of War Ragnarok is probably one of the best games that Sony came out with in the last year. Uh, people think pretty highly of it. I haven't played it myself um, because I don't have a PS5, but... Uh, Mortal Kombat 1 over here, if you're going to spend that kind of money on Mortal Kombat 1, I would recommend it on a console like the PS5 uh, or the Xbox Series. Modern Warfare 3, I do not recommend at all, ever, under any circumstances. It's a horrible, broken mess. Uh, it feels like DLC to Modern Warfare 2. Um, you can't even play the game without already owning Modern Warfare 2 to launch through it into the new game. So, you know, do not buy Modern Warfare 3 for your buddy for Christmas or whatever. If they want to get into that, let them get into that themselves. Uh, some more PlayStation on the next page. We'll just kind of skip through some of this stuff. We've got, uh... PlayStation didn't have a lot of great games this year, so a lot of these are third-party games. We've got Hogwarts Legacy, Lords of the Fallen is apparently a pretty good Souls-like game, so is Lies of P. It's based on kind of a, a spin on the Pinocchio story. I played a couple hours of this game. It is fairly difficult, um, but it's, it's interesting and it plays well. Of course, you've got your standard, your Maddens, and your soccer games, and hockey games, and UFC, and all that kind of stuff. These are yearly releases. If you're, you know, if the person you're buying gifts for is a big sports fan, uh, buying them the modern version of whatever their favorite sports is, sure, sure, whatever. Like, uh, you can't go wrong if they're a sports fan. Uh, what do we got here on the other page? So this is just a bit of a highlight of, this is PlayStation's, um, subscription service kind of similar to what i was talking about with nintendo they have a three-tier system with essential extra and premium um, you need to have at least one of them to have access to online play so you pretty much have to have at least the essential um, i'm not 100 percent sure what the price points on these are i know they've gone up um, the Essential does give you access to a few games, I'm not sure what. The Extra Tier seems to be the one that people recommend, the one in the middle, uh, because it gives you access to a bunch of, like, PS4 and PS5 games, um, that you can play, well, I won't say for free, because you're playing, paying for a subscription, but you get to play them for one price. And then the Premium Tier is supposed to have access to a bunch more retro titles and stuff, from what I understand, Sony is pretty slow at releasing content for the premium tier, so you're probably best with the extra tier. Uh, we've got some accessories down here. Um, PS5 phone clip for remote plays, where you can clip this onto a DualSense. Uh, that's not a bad, um, it's not a bad gift, like a stocking stuffer, it's $12.99, clips onto a DualSense controller and lets you remote play your PS5 to your phone. Well, you can do that anyway without the clip, but the idea is then it kind of mounts it in a position where, you know, it holds the phone for you so you can play 
as the game is intended anyway. Not a bad little stocking stuffer for $12.99. Uh, one of these charging docks for the dual controllers. Uh, you can charge two controllers at the same time. Um, the PS5 controllers are not known for their battery life, so having a second controller and a charging dock uh, for convenient charging is kind of a must. Let's see what else we've got in here. Xbox page. So we've got the Xbox Series X highlighted here at $649. That's the same price as the PlayStation 5. But then we have the Xbox Series S 1TB. This was just announced a month or so ago at $449 Canadian. That's like $349 US. And the Series S Starter Bundle, which is the basic Series S uh, with the 512, I think, for $379. Uh, we got some controllers. Xbox is great at making all kinds of cool controllers, cool colors and things like that. Uh, so if you are an Xbox family, you can't go wrong with a cool controller, uh, whatever your favorite color is or style. Um, these are the Elite Core controllers, which is like a basic version of a very good controller. So it's a very good controller. Uh, with just a few less features than the really high-end one, which makes it a little more approachable financially than the PS5, um, whatever, DualSense Edge, for example. It's a comparable controller at a much lower price point, so that's a good thing. Uh, let's go through some of Xbox's major games. Of course, we had Starfield come out a couple of months ago. For better or for worse, it's probably Xbox's biggest game this year. I played a couple of hours of it. And yep, it's a Bethesda game. Uh, <laughs> Forza Motorsport. Um, there was some problems with this game, especially on PC, but I think some of them are ironed out now. This, like Gran Turismo, is Microsoft's version of a track simulator game. Don't get this confused with the Forza Horizon series, which is more of an arcade-style game. Uh, if you like to simulate track racing and all kinds of crazy exotic cars and stuff like that and go on a, a you know career mode where you start with a crappy little Honda Civic or something and build your way up and get a reputation and get better and better cars, uh, this is definitely the way to do it. And uh, if you're playing on the Xbox Series X, the game is competent and looks pretty darn good. Um, again, kind of the same selection of games, your NHL games, NBA, UFC, that sort of thing, uh, as was on PlayStation. They're highlighting Assassin's Creed Mirage, which is the newest Assassin's Creed game that just came out. And apparently this is more of a back to grassroots version of Assassin's Creed. I haven't played it yet, but the last couple of Assassin's Creed's have ballooned out into huge 100 hour RPGs and I think this one targets more of a compact 30 or 40 hour experience at the most. Um, Persona 5 Tactica they're talking about here. Uh, if you've never played Persona 5, I'm not saying you won't like this game, but it's a spin-off of Persona 5 and uh, there have been a couple of other spin-offs of Persona 5. So, you know, at $80, I feel like you should probably wait a couple years on this game because Persona 5 Strikers that came out like three years ago is now like a $25, $30 game. So just give this one some time, I think. All right, what else have we got here? All right, so we can start to flip through this a little bit faster here. We've got some accessories and stuff like that. We've got headsets, we've got microphones for streaming. Um, these Razer headsets, uh, I mean, I think they're better than Turtle Beach. Um, these Steel Series ones here, $229, and I don't really recommend them. Honestly, I think these $79 Razer headphones are better, uh, but you can, you know, take that with a grain of salt, I guess. Um, let's see what else we have here. We're getting into the tchotchkes. We've got a page for Star Wars. We've got, you know, figures and things like that here. We've got some toys, the Black Series Star Wars action figures and that sort of thing. I mean, this is really what GameStop has become over, you know, over the last couple of years. Like we're at the midpoint of this book now and we're done with the video games halfway through. And that about represents the 
you know, the split in the store as well in terms of what they've got. So we've got some Hasbro toys here. Um, you know, these companies probably paid for an entire page spread in the book to, you know, show off their stuff here. But uh, Power Rangers, Indiana Jones, whatever. Uh, Nintendo. Nintendo's got a page for their toys and accessories and stuff. So we've got Mario Kart characters and mini figures and that sort of thing. There's a Super Mario Brothers movie Donkey Kong Stadium play set for $31.99. That looks kind of cool, to be honest. I don't really have room for it, but uh, there's another Bowser Battle action figure play set for $65 by Jack Pacific. Uh, over here, we've got uh, we've got some statues, a Charizard statue. Squishmallows have been all the thing for a few years now. Uh, <laughs> got socks if you want socks, ugly Christmas sweaters, that's been a thing for a while. I'm kind of getting to the end of anything interesting here, but uh, what in this catalog attracts your attention? Got some plushes and stuff here. A coloring page, a word search, like the intention of these is to bring back that nostalgia of you know, going through these things and circling your favorite stuff. And they've got activities for kids and stuff. There's a maze here, help Yeti find his way home. I don't know where this Yeti character came from, if he's new this year or just new in Canada, but I've never seen him before. Uh, did you know, played games are a minimum 15% cheaper than new games. That's a good thing to notice because, frankly, most of the games that they sell... Uh, at GameStop are opened anyway, so there's very little difference between a new game and a used game. Uh, assuming it's in presentable visual condition, it's basically the same thing. Uh, I would recommend paying for their uh, for their warranty, whatever they call it, uh, game price guarantee, whatever. Um, I would recommend paying for their warranty for like three bucks on a used game because you don't know if it's been, you know, damaged at somebody else's house or something. I would not recommend it for a new game. It's just not necessary because the game itself has a warranty anyway. Um, and, uh, but for a used game, I would definitely recommend it. And that's really, you've covered your bases there. Uh, recharged hardware and accessories they they carry they didn't really show any of that uh, in here but uh, if you're looking for an older console like a ps4 pro or an xbox series X or an xbox one x or something like that uh, to round out your collection uh, gamestop is a pretty good place to get them they do somewhat refurbish them and there is a warranty which is better than buying a second-hand console off of Facebook Marketplace or something like that. Uh, their prices are pretty good and they tend to have sales frequently. So, you know, uh, some people have had better or worse luck with GameStop consoles, but personally I haven't had a problem. Um, and also remember that you can trade things in. And there's been a lot of you know jokes and memes over the year about uh, over the years about GameStop not paying very much for trade-ins and that's true of all video game stores anyone pawn shops anyone that buys games do not pay very much for them unless they are games that are expensive new games things that people are going to want to buy like obviously they can only pay you a fraction of what they can sell it for so if you're bringing in you know, games that nobody wants, shovelware games and stuff like that, and they offer you a buck for it, uh, you can't really get mad because it's a game nobody wants. But, it, like, if you bring back something that you bought within the last year or so um, that is a popular game, it's still going to have some value to it, whether it's 10 bucks or 15 or 20 bucks. You know, if it's a Nintendo first party game, like a Mario game or a Zelda game or something, they're probably going to give you. 30 or 35 bucks for those games so keep that in mind with your christmas shopping that you know if there's things you don't want anymore you can trade those things in towards some christmas gifts for this year anyways guys let me know down in the comments uh, did you enjoy this video do you enjoy taking this little time to pick out christmas presents and go through these you know holiday guides with me thanks for sticking around uh have a good one